most welcome to Historia Spanana, History Connaissance. This is the story of the US battleship New Jersey. She was launched in 1942, commissioned in 1943, participated in combat operations in World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and finally the Lebanese Civil War. Recommissioned three times, then stricken in 1999, and now a museum ship in Camden, New Jersey. And please, like, share and subscribe. It means a lot to us. The dispatch from the Vice Chief of Naval Operations to the Commandant of the 4th Naval District. The Commandant is authorized to place in commission the United States ship New Jersey, the Navy Yard, Philadelphia, May 23rd. In accordance with the foregoing authority, I now direct the New Jersey be placed in commission. The year was 1943, and the New Jersey, a steel miracle of speed and firepower, was ready to join the United States Navy for Pacific War Service. Her gun crews were behind armor 16 inches thick. There was 17-inch steel over other vital parts of the New Jersey. Her 16-inch guns could hurl 2,700-pound shells 23 miles with unerring accuracy. More than 100 lighter guns could blast any raider out of the skies, and she was strong enough to resist the worst the enemy could throw at her. Whither, O oh splendid ship, thy white sails crowding, leaning across the bosom of the urgent west, that fearest nor sea rising, nor sky clouding, whither away, fair rover, and what thy quest? Robert Bridges' white sails had given way to 212,000 horsepower turbines, and the quest of the New Jersey and her sisters, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Missouri, was victory in the Pacific. There was no pause after her shakedown training before the New Jersey's baptism of fire. She steamed into the full fury of the battle for the Marshall Islands at the end of January 1944, and the fiercely defended Japanese fleet base at Truk. Her great guns created devastation to shore. Her 5-inch, 40 and 20 millimeter artillery stamped the sky with hectic patterns of dark puffs and streaked it with arching tracers. Day by day in the tumult of battle, the men became more skillful and the guns synchronized with the rhythm of destruction and the enemy planes tumbled down in awful balls of fire to a hissing death in the ocean. From Kwajalein to Truk, from Panape across the equator to New Guinea, from the damp chill of a north wind to the feverish heat of the southern Philippines, the officers of the New Jersey once lived off duty in this wardroom, talking of the routine problems of the day, or maybe that big shoot when the brown stain of their shell bursts had all but screened off the island of Guam before the invasion craft went in, or what the captain had said when that kamikaze grazed the foremast and exploded 50 yards off the port bow. Through the tedium, the discomfort, the frequent sharp dangers, there was the talk, and from it grew the bonds which secure the friendships of fighting men. And the captain himself, alone with his responsibilities, arbiter of 3,000 lives, at once warrior, chieftain, patriarch, and judge, as well as commander of one of the most powerful vessels of war ever devised by man. The price of the battle stars earned by the New Jersey and her sister battleships was paid in the lives and injuries of good American sailors and the sorrowing of wives and families. Blood had flowed in every combat at sea since Actium. 
Only the nature of war at sea had changed, and the role of the battleship with it. Billy Mitchell, like so many prophets, had been only half right. The battleship was no longer the ship of the line, whose war was to pound the enemy fleet in a slamming duel. The aerial bomb and torpedo had finished all that. She was a near impregnable steel fortress, with great guns to strike with weighty high explosives at land targets, and small guns to clear the skies for the new queens of the Navy, those floating airfields, the carriers, upon whom the battleship depended for her own survival. Now the battleship was the fleet's armed bodyguard, sharp of eye and quick on the trigger. Bull Halsey himself hoisted his flag on the New Jersey, wove his webs of strategical genius, and leapt on the flies as they flew into trap after trap. The battles did not cease with the end of the day, for when the sun went down and the stars came out far over the summer sea, and never a moment ceased. Ship after ship, the whole night long, with her battle thunder and flame, God of battles was ever a battle like this in the world before. It was the summer of 1945. The end was near. Under the masterly command of Bull Halsey, the New Jersey had fought at the Marianas the Philippine Islands, at Iwo Jima. Like Sir Francis Drake on Plymouth Hoe, awaiting the Spanish Armada, Fleet Admiral Halsey had time for a game before the final and decisive triumph. The enemy was crumbling fast. The New Jersey was steaming at flank speed to participate in her final annihilating battle, Okinawa. Down here on that day, the smell of danger was as acute and penetrating as the scent of the hot bearings and racing turbines, no less because it was the last battle. And the courage of the men was of a very special kind as they exercised their subterranean skills, learning of the battle above only from the sounds and shocks, knowing that if the outcome was defeat, their chances of survival were the slimmest of all. <laughs> These brave men of the New Jersey survived, and after that last battle, they raced up from the darkness of war into the dazzling light of victory to join those who had worked the guns. Yes, at last, it was all over. It is the summer of 1967, and the air is full of new national anxieties. The New Jersey is suddenly alive again, throbbing to the activity of dockyard workers who have come to prepare the old warrior for sea. Yet again, the battleship is to be called back to active duty. In August, the New Jersey is detached from her old consorts and drawn in slow dignity from her birth into dry dock. Neglected for 10 years, she is again the center of attention.
men at work on her in the Philadelphia naval shipyard are another special breed, as tough in their own way as those who man a battleship in action. They are all weather men who can work high above the deck in winter like a mariner furling a windjammer's topsail, or deep in the chill bowels where it's as dark and claustrophobic as a Pennsylvania coal mine. They are men who may have worked on the New Jersey back in 1950, or even when she was first built in the early 1940s. They all know her, and now with their expertise and strength, they come on board again to graft their wondrous computers, sophisticated communications, modern lighting and air conditioning onto the complex structure and organs of the battleship. seasons turn and the low autumn mists over the Delaware give way to the chill and damp of a dockyard in winter, the complex organism is reawakened, stage by delicate stage. comes to the ship as her crew gathers, some fresh to battleship service, others who've known it all before. This man and this ship may be rich in memories, but today is when history starts again, yet still chained with the past by links of men and links of steel. On the New Jersey, men like this fought and saw others fall 24 years ago and 17 years ago, and now perhaps they may endure it all again. For this ship, which has experienced the forces of nature and man, will soon be echoing again to the feet of men who have tasted action, and others who thought that war was something out of history books. The New Jersey's guns are exercised. The massive turbines turn over once more. Paintwork is cleaned down, and steel that was chipped with age is turned first red, then a clean, purposeful gray. A year's work is over. For so long a graveyard memorial, she will soon be a pulsating reality. Main control, stand by to answer all bells. Take in all lines. All right. Ten is clear the ship, sir. Underway. Uh... First time I've seen that fan tail clear in four months. Surely the old ship knows that a new dawn is breaking for her. That again, after such a long, long silence, the crisp orders of her new commander are ringing out from her bridge. Get a stern, sir. Very well. Starboard engine ahead, one third. Starboard engine ahead, one third. Uh, Chart house, range your life. This is a testing time when a hundred specialists must check a thousand minute perfections. Main control, bridge, the engines seem to be answering nicely. So the New Jersey is off on her trials, at first slowly and gently downriver. One long blast on a whistle. Then she feels again the heady sensation of speed and the swift caress of the 33-knot water sweeping along her hull. In a few days' time, the Navy and the people will come to pay their homage, and the band will strike up in joyful unison with the cheers, 
at her recommissioning. And so this is the day of days. Senior officials, important guests, gold braid. Today we recommission the battleship. New Jersey is most welcome. A touch of the formality, the pump, and the color the New Jersey deserves to celebrate the start of a new life. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.